On October 25, 1948, a man considered to be the greatest wrestler of all time was born, Dan Gable. Born in Waterloo, Iowa, Gable was instantly a stud in multiple sports. In high school, he was a YMCA swimming champion, the quarterback of his football team, and also a very skilled baseball player. But there was one sport where he excelled the most, wrestling. At Waterloo West High School, Gable posted a 64-0 undefeated record while recording three individual state championships. In 1964, he won the championship in 95-pound weight class. In 1965, he won it at 103 pounds. In 1966, he won it at the 112-pound weight class. During his sophomore year, he suffered a personal tragedy that helped him excel on the wrestling mat. His older sister, Diane, was molested and murdered. He turned to wrestling as a way to uplift his shattered family and to cope with this tragic loss. Gable committed to the University of Iowa State to wrestle in college. Iowa State didn't allow freshmen to wrestle on varsity, but he still went 17-0 on JV. As a sophomore in 1968, Gable posted a 37-0 record. He was also the Big 8 champion, and he won his first NCAA title at 130 pounds. As a junior, Gable posted a 30-0 record and recorded 25 straight pins, an NCAA record. He won his consecutive Big A championship and NCAA championship at 137 pounds. During Gable's senior season, he wrestled at 142 pounds. He was once again the Big A champion. Going into his senior year national championship match, Gable was rolling with 182 straight wins dating back to high school. But the unbelievable happened. Gable was defeated by University of Washington's Larry Owens by a score of 13 to 11 in the finals. Here are the highlights from the greatest upset in wrestling history. Well, here we go. There's the champion, Dan Gable, as a boss in high school or college. The bouts before, which were very good bouts and great wrestlers, it was sort of like a prelim. They came to see Dan Gable win again. There Owens goes again on an underarm spin and a roll through. Owings, from the get-go, went after Gable. Uh, usually, uh, most of the athletes uh, that got on the mat with Gable were very cautious. He's right back in, but on a takedown. He hasn't got it yet. There he goes. And now Owings goes out ahead by a score of 6-2. And Dan Gable is in serious trouble here in the second period. Dan Gable is in serious trouble here in the second period. I mean, there were teammates in the stands who were watching the match who weren't even paying attention to it, were laughing with each other. A couple of them didn't start paying attention until the third period, and they said, and looked at the scoreboard and said, this is close. Gable looks a bit tired. Yes, he does. Oh, he's got it on the way. He's got him down. The two-point takedown. And on his back also. As I saw the action, I thought, hey, he got the takedown, but it's 11-11. We're going to see an overtime, which I loved. But there was the two-point near-fall predicament, I believe we called it at that time. And Dan Gable was bewildered by the score. He thought that the score would be 11-9 on the board, but a 11-11 tie with his writing time. There was confusion that uh, in Dan's uh, face, questioning it, that, that the, the near-fall was called awful quick. But um, then I think it was almost like I can't believe I'm in this position. I've not been here before. Now there's only three seconds remaining. Owings is leading. Got 13 yards for the riding time. The final score, there it is. Although Gable was very disappointed, he still had one of the greatest high school and collegiate wrestling careers of all time. He finished with a record of 182-1. He was a three-time high school state champion, as well as a two-time national champion and a three-time All-American. He still currently holds the NCAA record for the most wins and pins in a collegiate career. His wrestling career wasn't quite over yet. He qualified to wrestle in the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich, West Germany. He went 6-0 with three pins and won a gold medal at 68 kilograms for the United States. This would be the end of Gable's wrestling career, but his coaching career was just about to begin. Gable's coaching career began at the University of Iowa in 1976. He went on to be the most successful coach in All-American collegiate sports history. His combined dual meet record was 355 and 21 and 5. Iowa won 15 NCAA titles in 21 years with Gable coaching. They were also Big Ten champions in all 21 of those years. Seven of those 21 seasons, Gable's Hawkeyes were 
also went undefeated. Gable went on to coach 152 All-Americans, 45 national champions, 106 Big Ten champions, and 10 Olympians who medaled at the Olympic Games. In 1997, Gable's final year of being the head coach at the University of Iowa, the Hawkeyes were big underdogs versus the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Gable coached on crutches after getting hip replacement surgery. He embraced the adversity and led the Hawkeyes to their 17th national title. They also held an NCAA record for the most team points recorded in an NCAA Finals match with 170. After his 17th national championship in the 1997 season, Gable stepped down from head coaching because he was getting too old to contribute in the practice room. He ended up rejoining the team in 2006 to be an assistant for current head coach Tom Brands. Gable remains active with the Hawkeyes but stepped down from his assistant role in October 2011. He also coached for the United States Olympic team in 1980, 1984, and 2000. Today, Dan Gable is a walking legend at the University of Iowa and to wrestlers and fans across the country. Dan Gable was elected to the University of Iowa's Hall of Fame in 1981. Today, he is a motivational speaker and leader and also does analysis for Iowa Public TV. His legacy will live on forever. There is a seven-foot statue outside of Carver Hawkeye Arena made out of Pierre Browns to represent Gable's legacy. The state of Iowa hands out the Dan Gable Mr. Wrestler Award to the best high school coach of the year every single year as well. Dan Gable will forever be remembered as the greatest wrestling coach of all time and as a walking legend in the state of Iowa and to the rest of the country.